I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. As usual here, life kind of gets a little busy and you can see here in between our last coat and now, uh, we have a bit of oil buildup here on the stock and I wanna make sure I'm getting rid of that. It's a little sticky and this is a side effect of applying too much oil and not getting back here soon enough uh, to wipe it down. I'm not too worried about that though, and I'm showing you this just to show you how I go about it. Um, if you're like me and you have a little kid running around, you don't get uh, to get back in the shop sometimes as quickly as you'd like. So I'm just taking a fairly clean scotch bright here, and I'm just gonna start working those areas where we see that shine and that oil build up. And this is just going to start cutting that back, that oil back. You can see we've got a little bit of some residue building up there as we're working this scotch bright. We'll go back through and see if this will take any more oil just to see if we can get that cleaned up. I mean, as always, ideally, you don't have to go through and do this. Uh, because you've been on top of your build and your schedule, but um, it's good to, <laughs> to show how I recover from a goof up like this. So we just take that scotch right there. We got a little bit there. And we just bring that back out. Work my way up here into the wrist. A little bit here on the toe. And this is just, you got to use some elbow grease on here to bring that out. Not sure what's happening here with our grain. It almost looks like it's burnt right in there. But you'll remember that that is an area where we had quite a bit of that punk or that soft transition in that wood. You can see it up here on our tang and back here into our comb as well. That's something where you're gonna be at the mercy of the piece of wood that you have on a build. Just a little bit. Putting that on the chalkboard really for lessons learned, we don't wanna start that oiling process until we know we have the time to babysit it and make sure we can get, get it done and get it applied right. What I'm going to start doing now is our reassembly for this piece and then after we get everything put back together, we'll go through and we'll do uh, our final coat of hand rubbed oil. When I start putting some of these pieces back together here, like our tang bolt, I'm just hitting them with a little bit of three-in-one oil uh, just to make the disassembly of this in the future as it's needed a little bit easier, a little bit more streamlined for anybody who might have to deal with that. With these, sometimes it can be tricky to get your barrel in when the tang is tight. So using my barrel as an extra handhold here just dropping it in and we'll tighten down to the breech. So touch up our screw head just a hair. Then on this side we have our one dot extension. It pays as you're doing this to have a Q-tip of or cotton swab of each of your solutions, in my experience. Just so you can hit any pieces you may have missed as you were initially building. And because we need to wipe those screws back just a hair, I'm not going to set them all the way in to align our screws in parallel with the barrel. I'm being very gentle with this right now because we don't have our barrel key through here. Really, you could look at doing these extension 
plates uh, earlier so you can just drop your key in there and secure your barrel. Oh shoot, your nose cap. So your order of operations in starting your reassembly, you want to do your barrel extension key plates as well as your nose cap before you drop your barrel in simply because you cannot um, get them in uh, otherwise. And as far as your barrel extension keys go, they work to hold your barrel in, uh, making it safer and, and more handleable all around for you as you're starting this reassembly process. So um, don't do exactly what I did, <laughs> but um, I hope uh, you enjoy it nonetheless. Yeah, our inlets have swelled just a tad with that oil, and that's why you'll see people say that they uh, don't apply any oil or finish until they have everything assembled. So here, back to what I was saying earlier, it's easier at times to loosen that tang. There we go. To get your barrel in there correctly. So to get around the lock plate on the CVA, which is pretty tight, and the drum on the barrel, we had to loosen this up. We'll drop our extension key in there. Then if we wanted to at this stage, we can take our little nipple here, give it just a dab of oil on the threads. You'll see folks put some, you know, never sees or other lubrication products into these just to make sure those threads don't corrode over time. And we'll come back in and we'll lock this down with a nipple wrench. We're going to use a hammer just to gently drop that down. And remember how snug our trigger guard inlets were originally. They are still pretty snug. Sometimes I think it helps to label your screws. Keeping them aligned like good little gunsmiths. Our patch box itself, we need to reassemble. Come in from the bottom, drop in like that. The patch box lid spring buddy. Now you'll see there that he's a little bright. So I'm gonna come in and just dab that very gently. Come in with our scotch bright. Just mat him out, just a hair. So now our patch box works, flips up, and we can come in for the install. I've got a couple moisture droplets here that I'm gonna buff out once we get this secured back into the stock. Being careful to not scratch my brass or the rest of my finish. I want that to be parallel to the bore. Grab our scotch bright and just Buff off that lid just a hair. There you go. So we can bring this up and reinstall our adjustable CVA rear sight. On our side plate side, we have our lock bolts and our lock bolt washers. I'm going to hit it just with some oil, make it threading a little nicer. To make it thread a little nicer. Focusing on getting them snug first. And we'll adjust alignment if we need to. A lot of these, as I'm starting it, I like to do a finger start and then finish with our screwdriver. In classic me fashion, we've left our ramrod spring out. For a final pass of oil on this stock, I've got just a little bit of my Danish oil in that dish. And I'm going to just be rubbing it on and applying it with my scotch Bright. This is gonna work more and more of that oil kind of force it into those pores and we're able to move it around the stock here a little bit to keep it from setting up in one particular area just taking just a little bit of oil out of my dish each time and you can see that kind of matte look that we had after removing that excess oil is pretty well gone we're back to nice rich color. We have a nice sheen. I'm gonna set this out in the sun so it can dry. And we'll take our final look. With a little bit of elbow grease and a little extra rubbing of our oil into the stock and our hardware here, 
This piece is now done. We're now fully done with this original CVA Hawk and, and uh, I'm really pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, we ran into some issues here and there throughout the build, but in my experience and the experience of the people I talk to in muzzle loading, that's par for the course and that's something that you're always going to run into. Uh, I feel like I learned a lot building this kit, both about the famous CVA Hawkins that I have grown up hearing about, even though I didn't live through a time where they were the popular muzzleloader. I learned a lot about these kits and I, I understand a little bit more about why so many people love them and still hold them dear. Um, not just for nostalgia, but just for what they did for muzzleloading, a lot like the Thompson Center Hawkins uh, did in kind of the late 20th century here for muzzleloading. As with any build, it's really nice to see it all come together here. You get to see little bits and pieces of it coming together as you're building it, but it doesn't look or feel quite the same as it does when you have it all complete and all finished here sitting on the bench. Now before I give this back to the family that owns this piece, I did run a cleanse oil soaked patch down the bore just to make sure that we had a little bit of rust prevention in that bore. I didn't notice any rust in it after it had been sitting for so long, but just adding a little bit of cleanse oil to that is going to help prevent any any difficulties over the years. I also cleanse oiled uh, the exterior of the barrel as well as uh, rubbed a little bit of extra oil down through the stock here just to let it soak things up just as I would if it was my muzzle loader and I was going to let it set for a little while. I'm not sure what the family has planned for this piece but I'm happy giving it back to them in the complete form here now. Uh, kind of in the way that CVA intended really in manufacturing these muzzle loaders so many years ago. I had a lot of fun putting this kit together and I really appreciate all of you sticking around to see the thing uh, fully completed here. It's time to give this back to the family so it can hopefully become a family heirloom for them just as many muzzleloaders have for many generations now here, especially in the United States. As always, I'm interested to hear about what you think or what you would have done differently. So leave me a comment or shoot me an email at ilovemuzzleloading at gmail.com. I'm a lifelong learner. I love to learn and I love to hear what all of you would do differently or, or what you think about it. So if there's something that you have a recommendation for, uh, for me for future builds, please, please let me know. Um, I, I love all of the input that we're able to get here on the internet these days. Um, I'm learning a ton every time I post something because so many of you are willing to share with me and everybody else that's out there reading the comments. So I, I truly do appreciate that. We're not going to let the shop sit empty here for much longer. Uh, we've got our next couple builds in the works here. So if you're interested in more kit building, uh, we're going to have some more of that on the channel here later this fall and winter. First up, we have an Invest Arm Planes pistol kit, which many of you will recognize as being very similar to the Lyman Planes pistol kits. Uh, this is, I think, going to be a pretty quick build for us. I'm excited to get that going. And then later this year into early 2024, as crazy as that sounds, I've got a Chambers New England Fowler kit on order that should be arriving shortly. I'm excited to turn that into a nice flintlock turkey gun, as well as a, a flintlock that'll work well with some early colonial American impressions that we're working on here on the channel. And then I picked up a buffalo powder horn kit from Powder Horns and more this summer. I'm excited to get back and working on some horn work. And I'm working on uh, learning a little bit more about horn engraving, or many of you might know it as horn scrimshaw. Um, so I'm excited to be experimenting with that a little bit this fall. These shop projects are really great because I can work on them at all hours of the day, especially while my daughter is napping uh, in the early mornings or late at night. So I'm excited to be doing those projects as well as getting back on the range here this fall. I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. If you'd like to see more up close photos of this kit and the entire build process, please visit ilovemuzzleloading.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.